Right, let's not take the piss. We both know why you're here. Our game just started again and you're utterly fucking depressed. Can't stop recommending this goddamn show to everyone. And as a fellow addict, you're doing a great fucking job, keep it up. The problem is though, no one's actually listening to your recommendation. That's why you've come to me, to glaze about the show. So that's what I'll fucking do, eh? I understand. No. So, episode one starts at the only place it can really start. The destruction of the council. Jace does the only smart thing he can really do and runs off with his boyfriend. <laughs> Sorry. Partner. And does what only can be described as touching hex cores with Victor. I'm not being weird. That's just, that's such a what he did. I think this moment says a lot about the relationship with how quick and irrational Jace's thinking is. Even after Victor told him to destroy the hex core. You have to destroy it. Although it was a quick decision, and Jace really wasn't in the right mindset to ma- be making that decision. Obviously because he's just been in a massive explosion, randomly. Like, So in the moment, I don't really think he did anything wrong, because like, he was watching his friend die. Like, doy. Then we have the uh, next scene, which is uh, Miss Kerman's Kerma- funeral. Which is, it's okay I guess. It looks good. All, all its purpose is really just to show us that time's passed and the funeral's gone on. Nothing of note, really. Then the next scene is the first council meeting scene, where Mel suggests letting the Undercity deal with its own problems and putting out a hit on Jinx, which is a, uh, a great suggestion, to be honest. This might come off a little immoral, as you're basically encouraging violence between criminals, but at the same time, desperate times can all for desperate measures. This also works because Mal's smart enough to understand that without a leader, the Undercity would just be uh, blowing up itself. Whereas the other councillors think that they should storm the city and bring Jinx to justice, which is what they choose to go for. One of them's clearly being uh, influenced by Ambessa, which uh, Mal basically realises straight away, as she's an intelligent character. So kind of you to assist Councillor Sallow, Mother. Which is a uh, great thing, really, because uh, a show that realises that schemers can understand when someone else is scheming. For example, Game of Thrones with uh, Varys and Littlefinger. Both of the uh, council's choices are complex and have risks. Mal's idea of putting out a bounty is smart, because they won't unite against the Piltover. But Jinx could be victorious over the other Cam Barons. The other councillor's choice is to storm the city, which could actually lead to them uniting against them, so it could be risky. This is a great way to show the complexity of the writing, where both choices have their own pros and cons and could really go any way. The only downside to this scene, I thought the uh, the 2 1 thing was pretty fucking cringy. Then it's settled. 2 to 1. Then we move on to the Caitlin scene with her father when her father is giving off absolute male housewife vibes and her father passes down the uh, family key and then basically begs her to take on the family legacy. Then uh, Caitlin leaves her housewife father to to see her totally not girlfriend Vi. Then Vi pulls out some of the worst dialogue in the show I've heard. I watched them kill my parents. Do you have any idea how that feels? I mean... Not only does Caitlin already know that they killed your parents, what? And this dialogue was already used in season one to Caitlin, so it's like... No. They were killed by enforcers. To be honest, the whole conversation between the two is not really great. It seems a bit goofy at times. Then we meet the first of the new cast, definitely not Vanda, who uh, who comforts Vi under a bridge in the rain and offers a drink. Then on to Jason and Mal, who are talking next to Vector, who's like, up on a fucking Han Solo carbonite uh, thing. And Jace is confused about why he wasn't harmed by the explosion. Which is definitely not to do with Mal. No, not at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Meanwhile, this is happening. I'm sitting here thinking, what the fuck has happened off screen to get Vector up there on a bloody slab hex core? What, 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 like what? We then go over to uh, Caitlin, who's currently fixating on uh, Jinx, and then she goes on to project a bunch of feelings out onto Jace. We then cut to Vi on a bench getting drunk, when two enforcers come to her, Maddie and Green Stoic Dude. Maddie's shown to be a quirky young enforcer who looks up to Vi and Caitlin. 
Whereas the uh, green stoic dude is just a green stoic dude. I, I, I couldn't say anything else. Maddie then goes on to ask Vi if everything that happened with Silco was true, showing that her and some of the other enforcers were inspired by her action, which is a great little addition as it shows that her actions have effect on the NPCs around them. And by the way, some of these scenes where they're just talking look absolutely amazing. Like they, they've cooked even on the scenes where like nothing much is going on. We then move on to the scene at Memorial where there's a uh, big fight. Vi spots an enforcer that looks dodgy, follows him up the stage, gets stopped. The enforcer goes on the stage, goes for shoot Mal, doesn't shoot Mal for plot reasons that are made extremely obvious later. We then get a big fight where everyone from Piltover is struggling because they haven't got the Hextech resources. And I tell you, this bloody, this fight looks absolutely phenomenal. The animation looks fucking incredible. And there's a little sequence where Jace finds a hammer, which is like his whole thing. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, I might as well. Then Vi runs, grabs Jace's hammer, and then they use the power of friendship to whiff fucking massively. And then Bassa comes in and saves the day. After the battle, Kate starts tweaking and referring to the uh, people from the Undercity as animals, which is uh, a bit of a development. Then one of the last uh, scenes of the episode, Mal says the line, they must have had help from one of us. And the camera literally pans to Ambassador. Like, come on, the least obvious camera pan in the world. Then in the last scene, Caitlin tries to fill her mother's boots and uh, announces they're invading Buddy Zone. Then we got a little snippet of uh, Singe clearing out jungle camps. Don't know why Singe is jungling, but here we are. Overall, I thought the uh, episode was pretty good. There was a few problems dialogue-wise, but overall, it's good. And uh, that's where it wraps up. If you uh, enjoyed the video, subscribe. And if you've got any feedback for the video, I'd really love to know, so put it in the comments, because this is my first time doing this type of video. I'm not really sure if I'm going to stick with the same format, whether I'm going to be streaming this next time, but just let me know. I will be making more arcane content, so make sure you just subscribe, yeah? Thank you. Goodbye.